In this global syndemic bite, I want to explain the evolution of approaches to community interventions to reduce childhood obesity. This is covered in the Lancet Commission on Obesity Report, and I'd like to expand on the characteristics of three broad approaches we describe in that report. So here I show a linear logic model showing the proposed pathways which an intervention would reduce childhood obesity. The factors related to individuals are shown in the shaded boxes. To achieve BMI change, we expect that this will require behaviour change, and that in turn will require changes in predisposition, such as attitudes, knowledge and beliefs, and changes in food and physical activity environments. We call interventions at this level package delivery because they are usually a package of interventions pre-developed by academics containing, for example, things like curriculum materials, cooking programs, funding to start school gardens and so on. The package of strategies is usually implemented with fidelity in a short-term controlled trial setting until the grant finishes and then the package is delivered no more. Most studies reported in the literature are like this, and while they can help to answer important questions, hardly any of these programs, even if they're successful, are ever rolled out to scale. In this table from the Lancer report, we summarise the characteristics of the three approaches, and you can see the package delivery approach tests the impacts of the package and is largely designed and often delivered by experts, with some input from the community. The study design can often be robust, like a cluster randomised controlled trial, which gives it strong internal validity, meaning that we can have confidence that the results from the study reflect the true changes due to the intervention. However, its external validity or its relevance to the real world interventions and the potential for wide application is often marginal. By shifting the focus of the intervention a little deeper, we get the community capacity building approach, which means the actual intervention effort is on strengthening leadership, building relationships, mobilising resources, upskilling people and doing the monitoring and evaluation. These are the capacity building blocks which support the community to find its own solutions. This approach seems to be very successful for reducing childhood obesity in some communities, but for those who need it the most, such as Pacific communities, three years of this community capacity building approach was not enough to reduce adolescent obesity. You can see the characteristics of the capacity building approach in the middle column of the table. It's much more engaging and empowering of the community. The quasi-experimental designs of having a few communities as intervention sites and a few others as comparisons does weaken the internal validity, but this approach is strong proof of principle for real world conditions that could be applied at scale. The third type of intervention is systems-based. We're at the early stages in obesity prevention and testing this approach, but it has several added advantages. Broader systems such as culture, the natural systems, and in particular community contexts are much more readily included in the interventions. The real added value of a systems approach is that the problem of childhood obesity is seen for what it is the unwanted but inevitable consequence of multiple complex adaptive systems. The food system, for example, is a set of feedback systems based on supply and demand and profit generation. This inevitably leads to food environments which are increasingly dominated by high profit, ultra processed foods designed to be ultra palatable, convenient and with long shelf lives. In other words, by design, the food system is creating obesogenic food environments. Now, community members can readily work through a guided process called group model building to create systems maps of the causes of childhood obesity in their community. This allows them to not only better understand the problem, but also to identify the most effective leverage points for reorienting some of those systems. For example, school food systems towards creating healthier outcomes for the students. 
The characteristics of the systems-based approach are shown here, and it's important to note that the intervention is explicitly about reorienting existing systems, and that the role of the expert is to support the group model building process and the systems mapping and to do the evaluation, but not to do the interventions themselves. So that was a quick whistle-stop tour of the evolution of thinking and implementing community-based interventions to reduce childhood obesity. While there will continue to be some need to test specific packages of interventions in controlled trials, I hope that most of the future research on community-based interventions will use these newer systems methods because they offer the most promise for sustained, cost-effective and at-scale approaches to reduce childhood obesity.